hello all welcome back to my channel uh, we'll have an interesting topic to, in this video which is uh, all about plastering so this topic is a part of building finishing okay in this video let's see what is actually plastering the definition of it and also we'll see the different kinds of plastering we have we will see the different kinds of uh, you know defects which occur due to improper plastering and so on so overall advantages of uh, plastering and disadvantages of plastering also will be covered in this topic and friends uh, if you want uh, the notes of any video in my channel it could be of any playlist any subject any video notes you want just click on the description of that particular video you'll have a link click on the link and you can download the notes easy so we'll move on with today's uh, session which is all about plastering so first of all what do you mean by plastering so as I've already told it's a part of building finishing right so plastering is a process of covering tough surfaces it's all about covering covering the surfaces with a material called as plaster or mortar okay so plastering means covering a surface with the help of a plaster so that once you cover the uh, surface with the help of a plaster you get a smooth regular clean and durable surface sometimes people also call this plastering as rendering what is rendering then the rendering is also applying plaster or mortar to a external surface means completely when the surface is open to atmosphere see now generally we do plastering for walls right imagine i'm telling you an example plastering we call especially plastering when you are doing the plastering for inner walls interior walls but when you are doing plastering for exterior walls means which are directly open to the air which are directly open to the rainfall wind action etc you call it as rendering but both means the same now see here this is the figure you can see this person is applying a cement plaster or a cement mortar and he is covering this entire wall now let's see what are the different kinds of materials used in plaster so we have ordinary portland cement we have lime or clay powder which can be used you can also uh, use surki some people use surki also then we have aggregates water if uh, you want workability you can use admixtures admixtures are purely optional so yeah these materials make a plaster coming to the tools so for this plastering purpose what kinds of tools we generally use so we have around six important tools the first one is plasterers trowel so this tool is used to scoop the plaster and apply it onto the wall i'll show you the figure so you see this is the trowel so observe everybody observe this figure now so the person will try to mix the plaster or the mortar in one uh, you know pan and from the pan he will take the this trowel he will insert this trowel into the pan containing the plaster or the mortar and then he will place it on the wall so for that purpose we use the trowel what is the next one scraper so scraper is used to roughen the surface means you are making ready the wall for getting plastered if any unwanted things are there any projections ups and downs are there with the help of the scraper you scrape it even you can use a scraper once you finish the plastering also to give any finishing this is our scraper number two this was our number one so this is a scraper you can see here you have a sharp edge here you try to scrape away the things next is hawk what is hawk hawk is like a small reservoir which will hold the plaster for a while before you apply it onto the wall so you can see here this is our hawk number three so see here on this you can catch this uh, handle vertically and on this you can put some plaster meanwhile with the travel you can start completing the thing some plaster you can hold it here for this you use a hook next another tool is bucket if you come back in this diagram you have the bucket here so for what is a bucket used now bucket is used for mixing next we have angle bending this is our angle building to give a much neat appearance to the plaster we use this angle bend and next you have an electric mixer here the last one so this is our fourth component or the fourth tool this is fifth tool and this is the sixth tool next you have a mixer 
to mix all the ingredients uniformly okay you use a mixer now uh, what is the objective of plastering why should we uh, plaster what is the purpose first thing is to provide a even smooth regular and a very clean neat surface imagine a wall which is not plastered which is constructed out of brick and imagine the same brick wall which is plastered which looks neat which looks smooth which wall can be cleaned very easily obviously the plastered one so it get an improved appearance and to preserve and protect the surface the same brick wall if you imagine in your mind one with plastering one without plastering which surface is uh, less vulnerable to attacks which is safer obviously the plastered one cover up the use of porous materials of the masonry work say suppose the same brick wall brick wall say suppose it's in porous in nature if anything falls on that it will be absorbed easily but there is something which is covering that obviously that is much better right to conceal defective workmanship say for the same brick wall there are some bricks broken here and there does it look good no so to close that if there are any cracks in the joints so to close that to cover up that also you can use the plastering concept now let's see properties of a good plaster so what kind of plaster you need to apply for plastering obviously it should be hard and durable it should be hard so whatever load is falling on that it should be able to resist it should be durable it should be working for long life it should be possible to apply it during all weather conditions so you should see that your plaster should be can be applied in all sort of weather conditions summer season rainy season morning time afternoon time whenever next it should adhere to the background see the purpose of plastering itself is to protect the surface right so when you apply plaster on the surface if it is not sticking to the surface no use and it should stick to the surface under all climatic conditions again next it should be cheap and economical we should try to purchase it very easily available easily and also of less cost less cost next it should offer good sound insulation so when you are plastering uh, any wall or any surface uh, it should not transfer sound okay next it should be uh, resistant to fire obviously it should effectively check the penetration of moisture from the surface it should be able to resist the penetration moisture penetration now coming to the types of plasters what are what are the various kinds of plasters available we have lime plaster we have cement plaster mud plaster stucco plaster and lathe plaster so these five kinds of play, uh, plasters we will see one by one in detail first one is lime plaster so the name itself is specifying lime plaster so the plaster is made up of lime as a binding material so this plaster would be a combination of lime which is a binding material uh, sand the fine aggregate water the, this would be the combination so lime is the main binding material used so it's called as lime plaster and Uh, as i've told it's the composition of lime sand and water it is also very similar to lime mortar but uh, the composition of lime and uh, uh, lime mortar and lime plaster are a uh, uh, little bit different because of the composition okay for mortar we used 1 is to 3 combination but for, for plasters we vary it based on the type of the plastering we are doing we vary the composition okay for mortar it's fixed 1 is to 3 is fixed yeah so 1 will be the binder and 3 will be the sand the aggregate part so mortar for lime plaster is usually prepared by mixing sand and lime in equal proportions to improve the strength small quality of cement is also added to it this is all we know so this is a lime plaster which looks very white in color next comes cement plaster what is cement plaster cement plaster is that plaster which uses cement as a binding material so again cement sand and water will make you a cement plaster it is the most widely used kind of plastering what we see it is also suited for damp conditions means what all objectives or what all requirements a good plaster sh should have it will all possess by cement plaster that's why we are using it and the thickness of the plastering the thickness of the coat we are giving will be around 12 to 15 mm sometimes 20 mm also depending upon the uh, purpose of plastering where the wall is placed based on the site conditions etc 6 mm thickness of plastering of 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4 ratio is recommended for cement plastering of rcc surfaces means if you are uh, plastering for a roof or if you are plastering for a floor 
any RCC reinforced concrete structure you are plastering it generally you prefer 6 mm thickness with a proportion of 1 is to 3 means 1 part is cement 3 parts is sand or 1 part of cement to 4 parts of sand so this is a cement plaster what we see regularly next comes mud plaster so mud plaster is that plaster which is exactly made by mud we see the olden houses the old uh, huts whatever the old structures what we see all were made up of mud plaster only okay and how the surface you are preparing to apply a, a line plaster or cement plaster the same you do it for mud plaster also means cleaning the surface scraping out the excess things like that and mud plaster will be generally applied in two coats why because it's not so resistive when compared to lime or cement right so we do we should do mud plaster in two coats so in one coat you put 18 mm thickness while the second coat you put 6 mm thickness so overall thickness of the mud plaster would be around 24 mm so imagine how uh, you know how thick it would it would be so this is a mud plaster next comes stucco plaster so what is this stucco plaster it is a decorative kind of plastering this is nowadays nobody is doing a plain plastering right they want something new they want to improve their aesthetic uh, you know sense they want to give a aesthetic improvement aesthetic appearance should be increased for that building so people started using stucco plaster plaster uh, uh, some people pronounce stucco plaster but i say stucco so what we do this is a decorative kind of plastering which is having an excellent finishing so it can be used for both interior and exterior based on how we are going to show that uh, you know surface and it is usually laid in three coats so, so, so mud plaster two coats lime and cement one coat mud plaster two coats two coat three coats so making the total thickness of plaster around 25 mm so around 25 mm will be the complete thickness try to divide into three coats so obviously the first coat is called as a scratch coat second coat is called fine coat third one is called brown coat sorry third one is called as white coat so first one is scratch coat on that will come uh, fine or brown and on that will come the third one which is white or the last finishing coat this is how it looks like so this is a stucco plaster a decorative kind of thing so once you paint on this also the surface will be like this little bit decorative like this you can make any kind i have shown you one figure Next comes lathe plaster, some say lathe in plaster, lathe plastering etc. So lathing may be either of wood or that of expanded material. So it's actually lathe means it's a material what uh, what we, we are going to use to plaster. It can be made up of wood or metal. So if you are using a wooden lathe, it, it will consist of thin strips of wood which is well seasoned, whose moisture is removed, whose width is around 25 mm and uh, uh, whose length is around 90 to 120 centimeters like this okay. this is a lathe plastering now let's see the type of finishing once you plaster what kind of finish you can observe on the surface you're plastering right with the help of these particular uh, different kinds of plastering you're plastering the surface but how it looks how can you finish it how can you make the finishing coat look like is all this smooth cast pebble dash rough cast and scrape to finish let's see what are they first one is smooth cast so this is a kind of finishing which is perfectly leveled perfectly smooth so you know in some places you touch the wall your hand will slide away so so smooth is this so that's called as a smooth casting and um, you can use a motor for finishing this even on the plaster you can apply a motor again whose proportion is around 1 is to 3 like this so smooth you have pebble dash see you have a word called pebble so we are using small pebbles or small crushed stones you know pebbles right it can be of one color or they can be of multiple colors small small stones okay crushed stones and you can uh, throw them into a uh, final coat uh, the final coat of the plaster into that you add these pebbles and you uh, plaster the wall like this so the proportion is around 1 is to 3 it means one part of cement will have three parts of pebbles so this is how the surface looks this you can see some for some exterior walls people do this next kind of finishing is rough cast name itself it is telling the surface will be rough so when you touch your hand on the surface 
you get a rough feeling you get a gritty feeling that's a rough finish okay so the finishing coat will consist of bigger size of aggregates then only you can feel that harsh feeling no so uh, the kind of uh, concrete or the kind of uh, mortar proportion what we use is around 1 is to 1 and a half is to 3 which is uh, our m20 proportion like this next comes textured finish again it's a kind of a, a ornamental finishing decorative kind of finishing what you can give various textures you can give on the plastering final coat itself you can give various kinds of textures whatever texture you want to look it at you can give that something like this any texture you can give and next is scrap to finish so you know scrapping right or scraping so scrap to finish is like putting some scrapes putting some marks so the final coat of plaster what we apply it is around 6 to 12 mm and you allow it to set for few hours if you are using a cement plaster then once it is stiffened not hardened when it's it's stiffened you scrape it why because i need the impressions once it once it becomes hard i cannot make the impression right so once it stiffens then i start uh, applying or i do the i scrape the surface in a, in a in a particular pattern either in a slant pattern or in a vertical pattern or a horizontal pattern for a depth of 3 mm okay with this one i think you could have observed this so this is called as a scrape finish so we use a you know blade saw blade or any other tool or any other material which can scrap the surface next let's see what are the defects in plastering if you do not plaster properly so till now what we have seen we we have seen what is a plaster what are the different uh, materials used in plaster what are the different kinds of plastering available uh, based on the binding material we have seen what are the different kinds of finishing that is available with the help of plastering let's see if you do not proper plaster uh, if you do not perform the plastering action properly obviously there will be a defect what is that we will see so we have four kinds of defects in plastering we have cracking efflorescence falling out of plaster and blowing out of plaster let's see them first one is cracking so everybody know this right if you are not uh, you know plastering the surface properly if you're not uh, ensuring proper temperature conditions proper curing conditions if the water is not sufficient for your plaster obviously it would crack and uh, therefore this resembles a very bad workmanship means it says that you have haven't worked out properly and even this may this cracking may happen due to shrinkage means if you're plastering the exterior walls which are exposed to sunlight you know uh, the water from the mortar will escape outside it gets evaporated so you get this shrinkage cracks okay so that's the reason once uh, the plaster becomes or starts hardening you have to cure it so this is how uh, is the first defect which happens the second defect which is efflorescence efflorescence we have observed this in many of the cases like in stones bricks etc so as efflorescence mainly occurs due to the presence of salts which is absolutely unnecessary so if any salts are present inside the bricks or stones on which you are plastering so the water in this plaster see obviously you are making plastering or plaster sorry with the help of a binding material sand and water right so this water will go and interact with the uh, salts present in the stone or in the uh, you know a brick or even sometimes in the uh, binder of plaster also like cement or lime and they form these white patches what we call it as efflorescence which give a very very ugly appearance third kind of uh, defect what we observe in plastering is blistering see even you can observe blisters on our uh, human body right on hands on legs you get blisters so uh, you know the small small boils like projections which are coming out that is also taking place for plastering also so small small patches in the form of boils will come out of the plastered surface that's called as blistering which is caused due to improper plastering so you can see here in this figure and next we have falling out of plaster come on now the uh, our main important objective or one of the important objective of plastering is the plaster should stick to the surface right that's what we told but now due to excessive changes in climatic conditions and uh, if there is no proper bond between the surface and the plaster what will happen the adhesion or the bond between the surface and the plaster will break down 
and your plaster starts falling down in the form of small small pieces that is our spalling or falling out of the plaster next let's see the overall advantages of plastering so coming to the advantages plastering is easy to apply you don't don't require any uh, specific operation for it just simply you can mix the materials and you can start applying it's most common form for all sort of wall finishings especially interior walls and uh, if you mix the materials and if you apply the plaster properly you can make the structure strong and durable and you once you plaster any surface that surface becomes easy for cleaning and on the plastering only will come your painting right so it becomes easy for cleaning uh, in, in case if you are going for a foundation there if you are doing the plastering also it gives durability for your foundation and uh, it will also protect the surface whichever you are plastering against all sort of climatic conditions but whereas a disadvantage cracks are very difficult to repair just now we have seen the defect called cracking so you observed a crack so how can you repair it so again you have to start filling cement mortar into the crack which doesn't look good right so on that again you have to do another set of plastering next it's very expensive to repair so once you go with this repairing it is um, it is little bit costly to do it so again you have to fill in the mortar again you have to plaster it again you have to paint it next despite the extra labor of hanging and finishing the drywall if it is a big wall uh, either in terms of height or width you have to put extra labor to do all this process that are the disadvantages okay so that's all about my video i hope i was clear uh, as told earlier for the notes of this video just click on the description of this video you'll have a link click the link and download the notes thanks for watching